Welcome to this Gillick Explains Finance video. This time around, Pension Basics 2019, Define Contribution Schemes. There's another video out there which, which is called Define Benefit Schemes. Watch that one if you missed it. This one, Define Contribution or Money Purchase Schemes. Just the basics, there will be a third video that compares the two side by side. Okay, so with no more ado, what's the background here? This is the standard style of pension now for many private sector employees. This is the type of pension that employers, if they offer a pension arrangement, want to offer. And for employees, it comes with certain pros and cons. And increasingly, quite a few employers who offer the other style I mentioned, to find benefit or final salary, are trying to get their employees into these things. Why? Because they're cheaper for employers, even if they're not quite so good for employees. So, they do offer flexibility and tax advantages in terms of saving the way benefits are taken. So there are uh, steps out there that have been taken within pensions rules to make these things attractive, but whether, even with those benefits built in, they can keep up with final salary schemes is debatable. And the risk is ultimately borne by the recipient. So unlike defined benefit, final salary schemes, here we're saying that at the end of the day, there may be some tax breaks, there may be some flexibility built into these things, but ultimately you don't know for sure what your final pension will be. The risk is on you. So, a bit of terminology first of all. These things confusingly are called by different names. So define contribution. Why? Because essentially the contribution is something that you decide as an employer and an employee. The final benefit could be frankly anything. That depends on investment growth. More about that in a moment. Money purchase, I suppose because you literally are using money now to buy money in the future. When you stop work and don't have an income, you're looking to this vehicle to provide something for you. And it's basically underpinned by uncertainty around the size of the final benefit. You don't know how big the final pot will be, but flexibility about how it's taken. So with final salary schemes, for example, usually the minimum age is quite high. It can be as high as 65 before you can actually start drawing a benefit. With these things, there is a little bit more flexibility. So the basic mechanics. Anyone thinking, how do uh, these things work? What's the basic principle? Well, very basic principles. An employee and employer will put money in, usually a percentage of your salary on a monthly basis. And that percentage varies from employer to employer. And employees have to decide usually what contribution they're comfortable making above, say, a minimum out of their salary. Then you get a pension fund. So the money basically is handed over. And you hope that the contributions going in plus tax relief, and there is tax relief on the way in, plus growth, which you hope you'll get, minus charges will generate a decent pot ready to fund your retirement whenever that may arise. So basically you've got a sum available, which is hopefully there to provide an income once you hit the age at which you plan to stop work or reduce the amount of work you're doing, which is increasingly common these days. So, key features, what have we got here? The income in retirement, how does that look? It's not guaranteed and it's not automatically inflation linked. So there's a lot more pressure on the employee, if you like, because you've got to think about, well, how much income might I need in retirement? Um, how much income could this thing generate? You won't know for sure, but if we were to pro project it and have a go, um, how much might it generate? And then, if I convert the pot into an income, am I gonna pay to have that index linked? That's gonna have a consequence in terms of the amount of income that it generates, it's going to be lower or not. And these are all decisions which are kind of almost made for you in a final salary scheme, but you've got to focus on in one of these. Lump sum withdrawals are permitted, so you can take as a rule of thumb up to a quarter of the pot that you've built up tax-free. All right, you don't have to, with or without crystallising the funds. There are various ways to do that, and there is quite a lot of flexibility, as I mentioned, more detail coming up in future videos or in other videos, about how you pull out the benefits you've accrued. And um, if you need to, while you are contributing into this pot, uh, while you're working, for example, you can defer stop contributions and run these things alongside each other. It's possible to have one more than one private pension. In fact, if you hop around employers, you may find that you've got lots of little pots and yeah, then you might be weighing up at some point, do I combine those into one that's easy to manage or do I leave them as separate pots? That's a topic for another video. Now I'm reaching 55, which is currently the minimum age at which you can pull benefits out of one of these things. It is rising over time, but currently 55. You've got some choice. So with defined benefit, final salary schemes, you know, the, the terms are set 
more or less, in terms of what you get and when you can take it. But here, you could choose on reaching 55, you certainly don't have to, flex the access drawdown, that is pulling amounts out on a systematic basis to cover your expenditure requirements. You could buy an annuity, so if you want to sort of sleep well at night, annuity rates are not fabulous, you can hand some of the pot, or all of the pot, over to what's called an annuity provider, and they give you an income. That's a bit like a sort of final salary arrangement, but usually the income that these pots generate is not as much as people might hope. Or you can just leave it untouched. So if you're in the fortunate position of having other income, maybe you've got property, for example, and you actually don't need to draw down at 55, then you can leave this thing invested and growing. And it can even be inherited, potentially, by um, your heirs. So the good news is what, and I've mentioned some of this already, you do have control over the investment strategy and flexibility about the way benefits are taken. So compared to being a final salary scheme, for example, you do have that degree of control. Now that control frightens as many people as it entices, if you like, so it's a two-edged sword, that one. But there is flexibility about the way benefits are taken and when they're taken. Minimum age is generally lower, although whether you can afford to draw down any earlier than 60, 65 is a moot point. That's uh, definitely worth weighing up. And it can be one of these schemes inheritance tax efficient. Now, for a lot of people, simply getting through retirement is enough of a challenge. They're not worried about whether they're going to pass assets on. But if you are in the fortunate position to be able to pass assets on, um, untapped pension funds can be quite tax efficient. So some buts, because it is definitely not all good news. Um, you could run out of money. In other words, no one's promising that the pot you have, say you're 55 and you start drawing on it, won't run out. Whereas with final salary schemes, you do have basically that guarantee. There's no pension protection fund. There's no automatic statutory backstop on these things should a provider go bust. And with flexibility comes great responsibility around the investment strategy and drawdown. Hence all the articles in the press about people not just taking lump sums out, buying flash cars. In fairness, not many people are doing that, it seems, but you've got to be disciplined and organised about how that pot that you've carefully built up actually gets used. To find out more, I'll stop there. Um, there will be other videos on this theme, but to find out more, editor at killick.com. And if you'd like to watch videos on other aspects of pensions, I mentioned consolidation, for example, I mentioned drawdown incredibly briefly, then it's killick.com forward slash learn. Some tabs here, tax effective saving would be a good one.